Hello and welcome to today's sanctuary service. I'm so pleased that you've chosen to join us today. As a church this autumn we're relaunching and last week we were thinking about reconnecting with one another and with God. And you might have guessed from the music you've just heard and perhaps from seeing this Mm, Rosemary next to me here that the word for today is remember remember my name's Sarah and I'm a reader at All Saints and I'm really grateful for all the other people who've helped me to put together the service together today I'm grateful to Josie who later on in our service is going to be helping us to remember in prayer those people and places on our hearts and we'll have an opportunity of bringing those to God. I'm also grateful to Amberly and Jed who are bringing us our readings today. I'm guessing that they're probably a little bit younger than most of us taking part in this service at ages of 21 and 17. I wonder if you can remember how you were at 21 and 17. What were your hopes and dreams? What were your pains and your anxieties at that time? I wonder if those anxieties have been left ago, long time ago, or maybe they're still with you today. What about those hopes and dreams? I wonder if they were fulfilled or maybe life didn't quite pan out as you're expecting. Well, fortunately, later in our service, we've got Monica, who's going to be speaking to us about remembering and particularly remembering who we are in Jesus. And surely that's a good foundation for all the ups and downs of life, whether our expectations are fulfilled or whether life has taken a different path to what we're expecting. So I hope you can relax and enjoy and participate in this service. As ever, I shall lead the prayers and the words written in yellow, and it would be great if you could join in the words in white. And today, our uh, liturgy, our words have been taken from the green common worship book, so I hope they're familiar to lots of you. But let's start now with these opening responses. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. And now let's join together in our first hymn, which reminds us what it means to have Jesus as both our Lord and our friend. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
What a great hymn. I wonder how you remember things. There was a time, wasn't there, that when it, it was said that you should tie a knot in your hanky if you had something to remember. Well, probably carrying around dirty handkerchiefs in our pockets isn't quite the thing to be doing at the moment. Maybe you write things on the back of your hand. I know that I could not get through a week without my list of things to do. That keeps me on track. There's a lot in the Bible about remembering and the value of remembering. And probably most profoundly, at the Last Supper, we find Jesus with his disciples taking the bread, probably not quite like this, and breaking it and telling his friends to do the same in remembrance of him. Sadly, we can't celebrate communion together today, <clears throat> but we can still remember, can't we? We can still remember Jesus' life of love and service and his death and resurrection and how that made a way for us to have a special relationship with God, to be at peace with God, to live a life free from guilt of the things that we've done wrong and to begin a life of forgiveness where we can release others from the bitterness and the resentment we feel knowing that we too have been forgiven. So let's take some time now to remember again Jesus' life, his death and his resurrection and because of that to bring to him our confession. So, as Jesus took the bread and broke it, he said, This is my body, do this in remembrance of me. So as we remember Jesus' life, death and resurrection, let us bring to him our sins and receive his forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power Forgive us and free us of our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
So now is a good time for us to affirm our faith in the words of this creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe and trust, trust in, in him. Do you believe in and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, God Father, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. The reading today is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 to 5. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 days. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Good morning. It's a great privilege to be here to speak to you in Sanctuary this morning. So this is the second one of a series called Relaunch that Mark has overseen and last week he talked about reconnecting and I do hope you feel connected into the church and today is about remembering who we are, remembering who we are in Jesus. So I've kind of split it into two parts, so I've got a bit about remembering and then we've got a bit about who we are. Um, so as I've thought about this talk I have thought about how much we rely on our memories all the time. I'm sure I'm not the only person who has gone upstairs only to forget what I've gone upstairs for. My children would say I've got a terrible memory. I put that down to having too many things going on in my head, but it might also be something to do with getting older. Um, so I'm a teacher and we've just returned to school after not being physically in school for quite a while. So I've had to remember all sorts of things in the past week or so. I've had to remember how to use the computer system, how to stand up and teach a class. I'm remembering lots of new names, remembering the text that we're teaching and um, which class I've got to teach when. We're now moving around the school instead of the students moving around the school. So I've got to remember where I'm supposed to be, remember the one way system. And of course, with um, all that's happened in the recent months, we've all got to remember to take our masks with us to the shops and remember to socially distance and things like that and of course in the profession of teaching a lot of that is about helping students to remember to remember things about the text that i'm teaching i teach english literature and to remember skills of essay writing so i asked some young people um, a question about remembering we were on the beach so there is a bit of noise in the background with the wind but hopefully you'll hear their answers. Enjoy this short clip. So if you need to remember something, what techniques might you use? Um, I'll probably write it down and maybe put it in a mind book. If there's something, if it's that important like that you need to remember it, I think you just remember it. I read it over and over and over again until I write it on my hand or I write it on my whiteboard. So there were four different answers and I'm sure that we can relate to each one perhaps at different times in our life or for remembering different things. 
there are some things that we just remember, like I would just remember my boss's name because I need to, or to go to bed, have breakfast, um, just things that we don't need effort to remember. But then there are other things that we need to specifically recall and perhaps put energy and thought and effort into remembering them. I've got three examples of people who want to or, or think, think about things that they want to remember and how they do that that came to mind as I was preparing this talk. So one is as a parent, you know, as a parent, you're often reminding your children, remember your water bottle, remember your mask, remember your glasses, remember your manners. Um, and I've got a friend who on the exit of her front door, so as the family leave the house, she's got a big sign saying, remember, you are loved, you are talented, go and do great things. And another big notice right underneath it in capital letters saying, don't panic, <laughs> which always makes me smile as I leave her house. I've got another friend who does therapeutic parenting with her daughter who has various special needs. And in her kitchen, she has little laminated square cards with reminders to herself for her parenting. Think toddler is one of them because the child is younger in their mind and emotions than they are in their age. She's got an image of a broken heart to remind herself that she's healing hurts that have been done in the past. And um, a reminder about reflecting back to the child things that they're doing to help those connections in the brain. That's reminding her how to parent those myriad of numerous con interactions that she has with her little girl every day. And those reminders that help her to remember how to be the best parent that she can be day by day. And then the last example was my mother. In her last couple of weeks of life, she wanted people to read to her from John 14 about Jesus having gone ahead and prepared a room. That's, she knew it, but she wanted it read out to her as a reminder. That's what she wanted to remember in her last days of life. And in the Christian life, we are called specifically to remember things, aren't we? In the Old Testament, they had rituals and feasts and uh, celebrations of things to remember. You might recall that when the Israelites were wandering in the desert and they were getting a bit fed up and they started complaining and God's anger burned against them because he said, don't you remember how I brought you out of slavery? Have you forgotten that? So actually remembering who God is and his goodness and faithfulness to us is an important part of scripture and it's like a command for us as well. Many of us will have missed sharing in communion, that whole remembrance of Jesus dying on the cross, remember me um, and the broken bread and the wine. Hopefully we can do that together again soon. So the act of remembering in this sense is an intentional deliberate act of the will. So we're thinking about that and we're thinking about remembering who we are, what's our identity in Jesus. So the verse that Jed read, thank you Jed, um, about from um, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, um, which is says has got a little tricolon of who we are. So the first one is that we're chosen people, or some versions have it, a chosen generational, a chosen nation, we're chosen by God. Again, if you remember in the Old Testament, it was the Israelites, the Jewish people who were that special chosen people. But then with Jesus coming, that has extended to all people everywhere, that we're chosen, we were chosen in the womb as we were created as God's children, that we're chosen by him. Um, the second one is about royal priesthood, and, and this one's perhaps my favourite of the tricolon. These two very weighty words which are put together. And actually, um, in Old Testament days, royalty and priesthood were two very separate but very renowned statuses of people. So royalty weren't just um, king and queen in a, in a, a, a token way, but that also represented ruling and authority but of course being able to walk tall in that position of great honor and then the priesthood was about access to god you know people had to go through the priest 
to bring their sacrifices or to ask for forgiveness or to lay their petitions down. And I think sometimes we can take it for granted that we have this free access to God. We are the priests. We can go directly to him. That curtain was ripped when Jesus died in a temple to show that the access to God is now free. And we together are priests with a royal priesthood. As I was preparing this talk, another thing that came to mind was um, a short clip, which um, I can't play to you now, but I think the link might be available to you. Um, Gary might have put it up for us, or you can look for it yourself online. So a new version of The Lion King came out a few years ago, uh, but you might be familiar with The Lion King as um, a film. And so just to briefly explain, in case you're not familiar with it, it's about animals in the, um, Masai Mara is where I always imagine it, but anyway, in the Pride Land. Um, and the king, the lion, the king of the jungle, Mufasa, has a son called Simba. Mufasa dies, so Simba, the prince, royalty, should take that place. But he's led to wrongly believe that he was responsible for his father's death and is scared into running away. He runs away from the Pride Land and ends up living with a meerkat and a warthog, not really living the life of a lion, but being a bit carefree and no worries. Um, Hakuna Matata, you might be familiar with. Now there's a point in the film where his father or his father's voice comes to him and says, remember who you are. You are not who you should be. You've got more to become. And this point changes his life. And then he gets back to the Pride Land and takes on the mantle of royalty and rules the Pride Land once again and, and peace and harmony return. And it, it's a powerful clip. And if you look at it spiritually, it, it resonates. And it's like this whole topic of remembering who we are, remembering our, our identity. And if only we could walk into every day remembering that we are this royal priesthood, this chosen people, this treasured possession, which I'll come on to. Wouldn't we walk tall? Wouldn't we walk with dignity and grace and an ability to love and serve others freely without worrying what other people think about us, but instead knowing that it's what God thinks of us that counts and he loves us. We are his treasured possession. So if you can watch the clip, do. It's powerful and a lovely clip. So we've looked at chosen people. We've looked at a little bit royal priesthood. And then the last one in this tricolon is treasured possession. Don't know if you've got any treasured possessions. I did look at a few silly examples online of famous people who sometimes have possessions that they sell for sometimes obscene amounts of money that sometimes goes to charity. So some examples, apparently Elvis Presley's Bible sold for $95,000. John Lennon's tooth sold at auction for $30,000. And apparently the chair that JK Rowling sat on to write the Harry Potter books sold for about $400,000, lots of money. But we are worth more than that. We're worth more than anything that can be bought, worth more than any amount of money. We are the treasured possessions not just of anyone, but of God, the most high King of heaven, the creator of all the world. We are treasured. I think it's so hard for us to really take that into our heart, but to walk knowing in that security that we are loved. So as I bring this to a close now, I did just want to spend a couple of minutes looking at the context of the verse so it comes just before it comes the bit about living stones calling us living stones you might be familiar with it and that's also a very powerful image isn't it of, of stones creating a temple and the temple is representation of god's presence among his people and that's what we are we're a representation of god on in the world and it talks about Jesus being the cornerstone 
this precious stone. So verse seven, so we looked at verse nine, that's the verse that Jed read. But verse seven says, to you who believe this stone, Jesus, is precious. And I want, I want to talk about this because um, as we know how precious we are to God, we know, trust that we are his treasured possession, then also our love overflows for God and for others. And Jesus becomes precious to us as we realise, my goodness, I'm so loved, I don't deserve it, I'm forgiven, I'm free, I'm chosen, I'm part of a royal priesthood. A little story about Charles Spurgeon, who was a renowned theologian and author. He preached his first sermon when he was 16 in a small cottage to a small group of very poor people. And he spoke his first sermon was based on verse 7, to you who believe this stone is precious. And he said, he didn't think he could have preached on any other verse. He said, but Christ was precious to my soul and I was in the flush of my youthful love and I could not be silent when a precious Jesus was the subject. So my call to us all today is remember who you are. And as a so that in this verse, so that you can go out and declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into light. And I haven't got time to go into that. That's a whole nother richness of itself. Just to say, we can go out and be that fragrance of Jesus, that presence of him, that temple in the world to represent him, to love and serve others um, with his help. So how do we do it? How do we remember every day that this is who we are? How do we keep that knowledge within us? How do we retain it so that we can recall it and, and know it and know it deep within us? Well, I'm convinced that we have a need to deliberately and intentionally choose by an act of the will to remember this. Jesus, when he was in the wilderness and being tempted, um, one of the, his temptations was about bread. So he wasn't, he was fasting, wasn't eating, have some bread. And he said, do you know what? My bread is the word of God. He had a spiritual need for daily bread, a daily input of the word of God. If Jesus needed that, how much more do we need that? We need to start the day bringing our minds to God, remembering that we are loved, that we're a royal priesthood, that we're a chosen people. We need to spend time in the word, whether it is just remembering a verse or sitting and reading scripture, dwelling in it and having it dwell richly within us. We need to have at least a snack if we can't manage a meal. And then we can go out. Let's ask God to help us to do that day by day. Father God, thank you so much that we are treasured possessions, a chosen people and a royal priesthood. Help us to remember that and to live in the truth and the light of that so that we can be your representation, your ambassadors, and your fragrance in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Father God, we come to you today in awe of your majesty and your power, and with a longing to serve you, remembering who we are in Jesus. Father, all that we want to say to you, you already know. You know our rising up and our sitting down. You know what we will ask before the thoughts are formed in our head. We know that you want to hear from us. You want us to be in communion with you and with each other, praying through Jesus, your Son. Heavenly Father, we bring to you today your world, a world where COVID-19 continues to spread. We think especially of India, where the numbers of cases is rising rapidly. Thank you, Father, for the love and compassion and skill that has led to the development of a system to provide oxygen where there is no electricity. And thank you 
for the progress being made towards the vaccine. We bring to you all in positions of leadership in church and state across the world that we be united in seeking the common good. We ask for restoration, for honesty and truth, justice and fairness. You created all men and women equal and you have given us enough for everyone. And we ask that we seek to share your bounty with those who do not thrive, but live and die poor and hungry and oppressed. Father, help us here at All Saints in Weston to play our part, to remember who we are in Christ. Help us to focus on the simple acts of the heart, what we read, write and say, print and broadcast matters. Words matter. Help us to guard our words. We ask you to be with our COVID-19 group and the leaders of all our church ministries and groups as they seek to interpret government and church guidance, that we, we may serve and worship you in spirit and in truth. Loving Father, we bring to you students and staff returning to universities and colleges here in Bath and children and staff back at school. It is like no other September we have ever known, and we ask for guidance for those who are trying to make it as safe as possible. You made us in your image to love and to be loved. We are social animals. And we especially ask for your help for those with disabilities, which makes distancing really hard. Please take away our fear, Lord. May we learn Though we cannot hug, we can use our eyes and our body language and our actions to communicate love and compassion. We bring to you all those who are poorly, particularly remembering Robert Page and Judith Leach. With sad hearts, we mourn with all those whose loved ones have left this earthly life. We lift to you Pam, John, Matt and all the family following the loss of Paul. Also for Brian and Mary Britnell following the loss of Andrew. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around them. We continue our prayers with a song from Resound Worship. The song entreats us not to lose heart and the image is of a road where we can journey from grief to a place where there will be no more weeping but joy in the morning. Oh sisters and brothers, be strong, do not lose heart, though you weep and you suffer. And the road you walk is hard Let the grace of another Become your path to peace May Jesus hold you through your grief Though weeping may come in the night There'll be joy in the morning The taste of our tears is replaced with the feast of the Lord. And our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory. And our green will be no Are heavy with sorrow, but 
this burden will not last There is joy yet to follow There is glory unsurpassed And our strength for tomorrow Is our perfect hope in Christ May Jesus lead you through your life And though weeping may come in the night There'll be joy in the morning When the taste of our tears is replaced With the feast of the Lord And our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory And our grief will be no Tears is replaced with feast of the Lord, and our enemy death is consumed in the blaze of God's glory, and our grief will be no more. Here's a prayer of encouragement we can pray over each other. God will watch over you now, always, tenderly, powerfully. God will watch over your children. God will watch over your house. God will neither nap nor sleep. Expect love and more love. You are not alone, not then, not now, not ever. Amen. So to conclude all our prayers, let us join in in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name, your kingdom, your kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let's join in our final hymn. Christ is made the sure foundation.
So we're coming to the end of another sanctuary service and I'm so glad that you've been with us today. I do hope that everything we've been exploring about remembering helps you feel like you have a firmer footing for the week ahead. Let's continue to remember one another as well and if someone comes to mind, do make contact with them and let them know that they're not forgotten. And if you're struggling, please make contact with us because it's good for us all to help and encourage and support one another at this time in particular. And as Tom said last week, we're really keen that more people get involved with these sanctuary services. So if you'd like to do a reading or share some prayers or you've got a story to tell or a hymn that you know we haven't sung for a long time, please do get in contact with the church office. We'd love to hear from you. But now we're just going to have a few final responses to close this time. And I'm going to leave you with a piece of music. We started with an old Teze chant and we're going to finish with a modern piece by a young Christian singer, also on the theme of remembering. Let's pray. So as we remember all we are in Jesus, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Hour when I cannot breathe, fear is on my chest, the weight of the world on me. Everything's crashing down, everything I have known. When I wonder if I'm all alone, I remember. Thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about your goodness.